Let's walk through the process of setting up an entity store. So this was a feature that was released in AX 2012 um, R3 CU11. So it came with the C11. There was a hotfix available um, that you could download as well. So the idea is that we can publish data out of AX and then point to that entity store which is another database uh, for reporting purposes. So let's have a look at the process. So I'm in the data and import export uh, framework area page here and I can go to the define entity stores so I've created one already but I'm going to create a new one so you'll see for example that I can give it a name so I'm going to call it uh, exe 11 es2 for example and I call it es2 now in this particular case it requires a DSN like a data source name um, so either user file system or file either stored on the client AOS or SQL so you need to see where you're going to store it so we need to create one of these first so I'll delete my record that we've got here and then create one. So before we can create a data source we need a database. So I'm going to go over to SQL Enterprise Manager and you'll see that this is my database that I created for the previous one. So let's go and create a new database. So this is what you need to consider if you're planning to use the entity store which is where are you going to store this database. Um, you probably don't want to store it on um, the same SQL Server or at least the disk system as the core OLTP database because you want to separate the load out for example and stuff like that but I'm going to create a basic database um, this is a machine that everything is all together just for demo purposes so uh, in this case I'm creating the database name and so I'm going to say OK now I in this particular case I'm not too worried about the backup so I'm going to go to my options and just check that it's simple recovery mode because I don't need all the transaction log um, stored for this one so this is my database that I'm going to put the entity store in so in this case if I have a look at tables I've got no tables at this stage because they haven't been published now in AX we needed a, a data source name so I'm going to go and create one of these um, and I'm going to go to my control panel and I'll go into system and security and administrative tools and so in this case um, I'm going to find my ODBC data sources so I'm going to open up these so this is where we'll find the um, ODBC administrator data sources so user system file for example this is what we had as options now in this particular case it's client, server and SQL all together so um, I'm just going to create a system DSN so you have to plan that out for where uh, um, ultimately the um, AOS um, that's going to be running batch can have access to this data source name so that's what you need to plan out so in this case I'm using a system DSN so I'm going to say OK and it's SQL Server now there are versions that you'll find published in this particular case I'm using SQL Server 2014 um, you'll find it in the white paper what versions are supported so I'm going to say finish I'm going to say X2012 C11 um, Entity Store 2 um, is my name so I'll use the same as the description. Now my machine name is AX2012R2A. This is the demo machine. So I'm going to say next. So we're going to connect with um, Windows authentication. So I'll say next. Now in this case my database is going to be my database that I created. So I'm going to go and find that which is um, this one, AX2012CU11ES2. Now what you call it obviously is something that's up to you from a name perspective. That's what I just happen to call mine. So I'll say next and then I'll say finish. So that's created. I'm going to hit the test button so it's tested. So we're OK and then we'll say OK. So in this case this is our data source name. So let's and then reference that in AX. So if we come back to our entity store page, um, AX 
2012 is what I called it C11 uh, Entity Store 2 just to give it a name Entity Store 2 okay so that's our name and I created it as a system DSN and it's on a client and in which case if I pick that you'll see that I get the lookup now which matches um, the two that I have in the ODBC administrator list which is these two so that's it created I can hit validate if it validates successfully then obviously it connects OK now the next part is there are no tables to store any data on that new database so what we want to do is publish the entities now there are something like 470 odd entities that are provided in CU11 um, there are however only about a hundred or so that you can actually use out of the box with the uh, entity store um, so you'll see for example if I try to publish for example the uh, asset acquisition method so let's hit publish you'll see that I'll get an error um, on these so I'll follow that up in a follow-up video you'll have to modify some of these entities if you want to use them now these are the out-of-the-box entities um, you might want to create your own which is aggregating more data together but that's something you need to consider in terms of what data do you actually want to expose to the entity store so in this case I'm going to hit um, select all and then I'm going to hit publish now I'll pause the video because this is going to take a while to publish and so I'll end up with only about a hundred entities now I'm doing all but you don't necessarily need to do all you need to just pick the specific entities that you need to get um, to an external store for reporting so I'll pick all and then I'll hit publish it's going to take a while so I'll pause the video while it publishes Alright, so it published on this machine. It probably took about two to three minutes to publish. Now you'll see that you'll get a lot of errors if you try to do these on the standard entities. And I'll cover that in a separate video for making some of these entities publish, specifically the ones with the uh, modified by property errors and things like that. So you'll get a lot of errors. As I mentioned, there's probably about only about a hundred and something entities out of the standard C11 that will actually publish and most of them are parameters so a lot of the entities that you'll get published by default are not that usable from a reporting perspective so just sort of keep that in mind um, you'll need to do some work in terms of finding the right entities setting them up so that you can use them in the entity store so that's the entities published now if I go to the database um, and you'll see I need to refresh so let's refresh on the database and expand so this will give us a list of all of the tables that we'll see in that entity store or database now you'll see for example I've got one here DMF eco res category if I try to do an inquiry on that you'll see that and let's pick the right database so AX 2012 CU11 ES2 um, execute there's no data in there so the next step is how do we get data in this database to use it so let's go back um, that's our data source set up so we can close that we can go back to the area page and have a look at the manage refresh schedule so if we do the refresh schedule you'll see that I've created one here already so I'm going to create a new one so I'm going to call it uh, ES2 for example and we'll say OK now in this case I'm going to skip staging which means that I'm not going to put from in our production database um, the actual tables to staging and then to the entity store um, we'll go straight from the tables into the entity store just to save a couple of movements and here we can pick the entities so in this particular case I'm going to find um, for example my category so you'll see for example the categories which is DMF eco res uh, category entity so I'm going to pick that and if we have a look at the source this is going to be our database that we're going to send to 
and there's some additional detail synchronization push and pull so we're going to do that um, so now that we've specified the entities because you could have uh, many entities but you're not pushing data into them so that's something you can need to consider which is which ones do you actually need to put data in so I'm going to create a new schedule for this which is essentially the batch server and I'm going to put my recurrence in this case I'm just going to set it to run three times um, and it's going to put it to run a minute apart now in reality you probably wouldn't want to do this because um, that means every minute whatever entities you've set up there it's going to push it across to that entity store so in a production environment that could be quite a lot of data so you might want to put this into hour intervals for example um, so um, you know you might want to refresh um, two three or four times a day um, just depends how real time you want to get that data into that entity store for the users to use so in this case for demo I'm going to set it at a minute run it three times and it's in batch processing so I'll say OK so it's submitted um, as a batch job and if I go over to the system administration have a look at my batch jobs um, you'll see that our job is waiting so I'll just pause the video while it runs okay so our batch job is run and it's ended because it ran our times that we set it up for now obviously we probably wouldn't end you'd set it up on a regular basis so if I go over to SQL I can now hit execute and this is going to query um, that table that we were looking at which is essentially the categories list so you'll see that I've now got data in that particular table if I pick a, another entity for example uh, let's say customer address if we do a select you'll see that I won't have data in this because we didn't synchronize that particular entity so that's something you need to consider is which entities do you want to publish and also synchronize so once the data is in here now in this particular case the categories is it just simply a list there's not much um, aggregated data that you really use for a BI perspective but just so that you can see getting access to it um, I could use Excel for example so I'll just use simple Excel and go into my data from my SQL server now here we can specify the um, server that we're going to connect to so we'll say next here we can specify the database name and so in this particular case we want the AX2012 C11 ES2 because that was the one we created that will then give you a list of the entities that you have available and so in this case uh, that we looked up the DMF EcoRes category entity that's the one we've synchronized and published data to so I'm going to hit next um, you got some additional options I'm just going to hit finish and just going to dump it into a table so we'll say OK so it's in, once it's in here then obviously you can do normal sort of um, uh, Excel so I'm going to put it into let's say a pie chart for example doesn't probably make a lot of sense but um, whatever uh, data you want to specify you could uh, do those sort of things um, but that's basically it access to that data, to the data through the entity store so that's a quick walk through um, the basic steps that you need to set up an entity store you'll find them in the data import and export framework and in this particular case we only extracted the category data because that was um, using the out of box entity but the idea is that you could make your entities aggregate data put the data into another repository and then allow users to report on that instead of uh, pointing directly to the transactional database so that's the entity store uh, we'll do some follow-ups for some of those entities and how you get them published and 